Hello, this is Rezorat from Radicad. In this video, I want to talk about one of the important architectural decisions in your Power BI implementation, which is when you want to build a report uh, for printing in Power BI. You have two choices. You can use paginated reports or you can use Analyze in Excel. I'll talk about these two functions, what are the differences, what are pros and cons of each, uh, so that it helps you in your implementation. Let's go and check it out. So when you are building a Power BI um, solution um, and you need report uh, to be printed, Power BI reports itself is not the best um, is not the best technology for printing. You can print a Power BI report, but the thing about it is that your visuals would would get printed fine. Uh, if you have a table visual, especially, or if you have a matrix visual, then the printing wouldn't print the rest of what you have in your visual. It would just show you whatever you see uh, in the screen, which might be only 10, 15 rows out of the table visual, and your table visual might have a thousand rows. So uh, there are a lot of situations that users might ask you to build a report in a way that it paginates and you can uh, uh, you can have it uh, printed with separate like sets of, of margins, uh, page headers, page footer, things like that. And there are two solutions for that actually. Uh, these two solutions are really good. Both of them are good and. Um, there are customers that use each of these. I'm going to talk about this. So let's switch to my screen. Uh, so here you see I have a uh, Power BI um, semantic model. It is opened in the model editor inside Power BI service. Uh, when you want to build a report for printing, there are two options. One option is the paginated report. I'll just show you very quickly what it is. This is not a video about paginated report. I already explained that. So I'm just going to uh, show you very quickly what it is. So if I go to the, um, to the workspace that I have this semantic model, I can start building paginated report directly from that semantic model. By, uh, by something like, for example, in this case, this is the semantic model I'm working on, uh, by something like clicking here and then choosing Create Paginated Report. Let me also enable zooming so that you can see this better. Uh, so one option basically is this, to create Paginated Report like that. And this would give you a really nice um, UI that you can go and build a Paginated Report. I'll show you very quickly. Uh, you can also install a tool. Um, so this is just loading uh, as we speak. You can also install a tool called a uh, Report Builder. Uh, previously, this tool was called Report Server, report, uh, Reporting Services Report Builder, because the paginated report is a report with extension of RDL. This is a old school technology from reporting services back in the days, like more than 20 years now. Uh, now, uh, I can use this to, for example, have a list of products in here. Uh, um, just select the products and this would add that here. It would show me also a preview of what this would look like. So basically this is a table visual in this case. In Paginet report you can also have other visuals as well. As I said, this is not a report specifically about paginated. Uh, this is not a visual, um, sorry. This is not a uh, video specifically about paginated report, but it gives you an idea of what it is. You can check that particular uh, video separately later. So as you see, this gives me a paginated view that I can go and, uh, and control it. At the moment, I didn't really set it up. So columns are across multiple pages, things like that, but you can control it. You can set the page size. You can have a header, footer. You can control all of these, or you can go and install something called uh, Report Builder. This is the tool that I have installed. You actually have to go and download it. You download it and then you install it and I've already done that. In this tool you can go and connect to your semantic model and build your visualization. However, this tool is nothing like Power BI Desktop. This is a really old school tool. Uh, it is limited to if you want to be really build a proper uh, paginated report, you don't really build it here. You will go and install Visual Studio and build it there. And it is quite a complicated process. Learning how to build paginated report is not an easy process. Like there are, pa there are books of uh, reporting services over a thousand pages. There are lots of details, lots of different sets up that you have to go and work with it. But it is, it is an option, it is a technology, you can use it, uh, and uh, that is one of the options. The other option that if you want to do printing is actually use a feature called Analyze in Excel. And Analyze in Excel is different from exporting data into Excel. When you export your data into Excel, 
you are actually disconnecting your data. Your Excel file can be shared with anyone. Even if they don't have access to it, they would be able to see all the data. And there is no concept of role level security, object level security, because everything comes to the Excel. Whereas analyzing Excel is totally different uh, technology. I have a separate video talking about analyzing Excel versus export to Excel. I mm, highly recommend you go and check that out. But here I'll just show you a very quick example of that. So if I go to this model um, and you can start from your semantic model, you can basically click on analyze in Excel. What it does, it would create an Excel file in OneDrive uh, for business for your account. Uh, and then it opened that Excel uh, file in Excel online, but you can also build it from Excel uh, desktop as well. There is no need this to be only a specific specifically Excel online, this can be Excel uh, in the um, desktop. Once you have that connection, this is a live connection to that Power BI semantic model uh, in the service, meaning that every time you refresh your uh, Excel file, you'll get the new data in here. Here it would give you a pivot table, you can also have pivot chart and all of those uh, to build whatever uh, report layout you want. And this is Excel, you can definitely customize your page layout in Excel, uh, headers, food you can do everything you want, plus the fact that in Excel, building something um, is much easier. Excel is a much better environment to build things like that. Like for example, in this case, I can bring English, English education as the row headers uh, from the customer table. And then I can bring something else such as, let's say, what do we have? Uh, yeah, product, so something like product category if I can find it. Yep, here it is. So product category as the columns. And then I can have something like sales amount as the value. Uh, as you can see, I'm building the report just like that, right? I can format it the way that I want. I can do all of those kind of things, plus the fact that I can add a field as a filter, like a slicer, things like that. Like for example, let's say gender, I add that as a uh, filter in here uh, and this would add a filter for me so I can go and uh, change it. Uh, this is like a normal report. This is like an Excel report with the difference that the data of this report is coming live from that Power BI semantic model. When I go to queries and connections actually, it shows me under the connections that this is coming from a Power BI uh, semantic model as you can see. Uh, so. So the differences between this and analyzing Excel is that you have no limit in number of rows you are fetching, like in um, difference between this and export to Excel, I mean. In export to Excel, you have like 30,000 rows, sometimes 150,000 rows uh, limit, but here you don't have that limit. Here the data is um, available from that uh, source, which basically means that if you do analyze in Excel and you save that Excel file, you share it with others, they, when they open the Excel file, they need to log in. They would not be able to see it without logging in. So security is mm, absolutely covered using uh, Microsoft Entra ID, uh, what used to be called Azure Active Directory and all of that. Plus the fact that you have Excel as your development tool. Uh, so going back to comparing these two options together now, let's talk about that. So if I'm comparing these two options together, um, there are pros and cons between each of these. So if you build paginated report, it's a really extensive, it's a really powerful tool. I would definitely suggest not to build it using Report Builder, use Visual Studio to build it. You need to go through a really steep learning curve to learn about different aspects of it. How do you uh, for example, use expressions in reporting services, how to use parameters, how do you uh, set up a lot of other things like dynamically inside your report. Uh, and those are all important aspects. You need to learn that very extensively. Um, so that is a good technology. On the other hand side, Excel is a, such a powerful tool. A lot of people are using it. So you can use Excel if you are more comfortable in the Excel environment. Plus the fact that Excel brings uh, another aspect to the whole thing. If I use Excel in my uh, implementation, Excel gives me ability to give the users also this power to go and build their own analytical solution. You just saw that in analyzing Excel, how, how easy it was to drag and drop the field and, and control it. And you don't have to worry about the uh, the security aspects of it as well because like let me just switch into here and show you uh, the role level security configuration that you can do so if you have the semantic model 
no matter you are doing page generated report or you are doing the analyzing Excel, in both situations, you would have this model editor, even if it is in desktop, it is still okay. In here, you would go and set up your uh, role level security. If you want to set up uh, column level security or object level security, you can also do that using tools such as tabular editor connected to your model. And then both analyze in Excel and page generated report, they both would respect that. So people would not be able to see things that they don't have access to it. Uh, using Excel, the method would be to uh, go and build these solutions um, in different Excel files, probably share it in OneDrive with the users. They go and open it, they log in, they see the new data, they refresh it every time they see the new data, but they see only the data that they are supposed to, to see uh, secured by column level security and row level security. With the paginated report, one of the benefits that we have is we have dynamic subscription, which is also available in Power BI reports, which we don't have in Excel. Dynamic subscription will give us ability to send like PDF version of these reports to different people based on some configuration. I have a separate video about that. Make sure to go and check it out. That is a good benefit, but it's not always necessary. A lot of people who want printing, they don't want this feature. Also, uh, it is possible to build something like that using Excel combined with Power Automate as well, which is a totally different subject. So even in Excel, you can kind of build that. Uh, in terms of the licensing, uh, your pro Power BI users would be able to use Analyze in Excel. They would be able to use Paginated Report. Both of them are available for them. Uh, Pros and cons, uh, paginated report is a powerful tool. It takes a lot of, um, a, lo a lot longer time to build a solution with it. Whereas Excel, still a powerful tool. It, your development time is much faster. Uh, one of the biggest decision points for you should be which tool is the most comfortable tool for your development team. If they are more, uh, more familiar with Excel, then use Excel. If they are more familiar with paginated report, use paginated report. But keep that always in your mind that if you use paginated report and you have built probably a lot of reports because it keeps adding and adding, in the future you need to find a resource who can continue build paginated report and these resources are hard to come by because this is a really old school technology for like 20 years now. Uh, whereas Excel, you'll find a lot of resources. But still, in both of these cases, the model development, measures, calculations, logics, everything like that is in the model, is in the Power BI semantic model. So that side is not much different. And then one last thing I want to show you, which I'll switch back into my screen again, is that in Power BI, um, both desktop or in web experience, we have this ability to create mobile reports. Uh, let's say this is a report. This is not a really nice report, but it is a report. In my report, I can go to a view tab and choose mobile layout. Let me just zoom in here. So in view tab, mobile layout. What this does, it shows me a mobile view of my Power BI report. I can also build it inside the, um, the desktop or, or in the web experience as well. And then I can uh, bring, these, uh, bring these items into my, uh, my mobile layout. And not only that, in my mobile layout, I can have some configurations which are different from my desktop layout. So for example, I can say in mobile, these fonts are small. So let's go and uh, make these fonts bigger. Like for example, the slicer header, let's make them much bigger font, right? Uh, I didn't have a slicer header here. Let's just go and change the values in this case. Right, you see this is, for example, a much bigger configuration and it shows here that these configurations I'm doing is for mobile only. I have a separate video uh, exactly explaining about that mobile report building, things like that as well. Now this report not only has the mobile layout, you can have many other visuals as well, but it also has the desktop layout, right? Uh, if I click on that, it goes back to the desktop layout. So, uh, so my point, talking about mobile report in the middle of all of this is that if you uh, consider building mobile reports for your critical reports, for the reports that board of directors need, this would be a very big uh, improvement in the adoption of Power BI in your organization because uh, these people, board of directors, uh, managers, they are usually very busy. They are in the meetings. They don't have time to carry their laptop into the meeting. That is why they come to you and ask for a printed report because they can carry that printing everywhere. Uh, but they all, have, they all have their phone with them. And Power BI app can be installed on Android, on Apple devices, on Windows devices. Uh, they can just install that app, log in with their users. If you build a really good mobile report, 
uh, they can use that in their um, communication and it is interactive it is even better than uh, a report that you print on a page so it changes a lot uh, you can't imagine how much printing this would reduce just this simple fact right so this is something that you need to definitely consider in your adoption architecture of power bi but also consider between using analyze in excel or power bi paginated report they both have good things but they have different uh, architectures in building that um, do you want to encourage self-service in your organization and um, increase the speed of uh, bi analytics or do you want to stay in the old school way build everything centralized by the bi team uh, which would also mean that you'll develop slowly you'll find probably harder your resources um, but you'll have some um, major technologies such as visual studio to work with I hope you enjoyed this video um, and if you like this video go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel we have weekly videos on Power BI and Microsoft Fabric until the next video bye